It was 1922, and a 23-year-old Ernest Hemingway had just experienced one of the most devastating blows to his writing career. A blow so devastating that he did not think he could ever write fiction again. In fact, he seriously considered giving up on his dreams of becoming a famous novelist. But eventually, something within him drove him back to his typewriter. He kept writing. Four years later, he had completed The Sun Also Rises, and over 30 years later, he had won the Nobel Prize in Literature. Are there obstacles, interruptions, and distractions threatening to sabotage your writing goals? Here's what Hemingway can teach us about remaining dedicated to our craft, even when life seems set on undermining our plans. In 1922, Hemingway was living in Paris, working as a journalist, and struggling to have his short stories published. On one of his newspaper assignments, he traveled to Lausanne, Switzerland, to cover an international conference. He told his wife Hadley to meet him in Switzerland so they could enjoy a skiing vacation together. She decided to surprise him by bringing his short stories with her so he could work on them during the vacation. However, she packed a suitcase with not only the originals, but also the typescripts and the carbons. That meant that Hemingway's nearly entire life work was in that one suitcase. While waiting for her train to leave the Gare de Lyon station, Hadley left the suitcase unattended. When she returned, the suitcase was gone! In his memoir, A Movable Feast, Hemingway recounts his conversation with Hadley. She had cried and cried and could not tell me. I told her that no matter what the dreadful thing was that had happened, nothing could be that bad, and whatever it was, it was all right and not to worry. We would work it out. Then, finally, she told me. I was sure she could not have brought the carbons too, and I hired someone to cover for me on my newspaper job. I was making good money then at journalism and took the train for Paris. It was true all right, and I remember what I did in the night after I let myself into the flat and found it was true. Of all of his work up until that point, only two stories remained, one that Hemingway had sent out to an editor and was currently in the mail, and another that Gertrude Stein had disliked and Hemingway had locked away in a drawer. Everything else, short stories, papers, an unfinished novel, was gone. It was every writer's worst nightmare. Hemingway admitted, It was a bad time, and I did not think I could write any more then. After all, why should he continue writing fiction? His stories hadn't been selling. He was making more money as a journalist. All of his work was gone. There was no assurance of future success. Hemingway had an arsenal of seemingly valid excuses he could have used, and yet, he didn't let a cruel twist of fate have the final say. We have one of Hemingway's friends, a man named O'Brien, to thank for Hemingway picking up the pen once again. One day, Hemingway showed him one of his two surviving stories. Hemingway noted that it was as a curiosity, as you might show stupidly the binnacle of a ship you had lost in some incredible way, or as you might pick up your booted foot and make some joke about it if it had been amputated after a crash. When his friend read the story, Hemingway noticed. He was hurt far more than I was, so I told O'Brien not to feel so bad. It was probably good for me to lose early work, and I told him all that stuff you feed the troops. I was going to start writing stories again, I said, and as I said it, only trying to lie so that he would not feel so bad, I knew that it was true. When Hemingway realized that his friend was more hurt than he was, Hemingway knew that he needed to continue writing. He had found the motivation to pick up his pen once again. Hemingway recognized that writing wasn't only about him exercising his creativity or seeking to become a famous author. It was most importantly about his readers. It was about him having the opportunity to share his experiences with others. Hemingway said it best himself. All good books are alike in that they are truer than if they had really happened, and after you are finished reading one, you will feel that all that happened to you, and afterwards it all belongs to you, 
the good and the bad, the ecstasy, the remorse and sorrow, the people and the places and how the weather was. If you can get so that you can give that to people, then you are a writer. That last sentence is key. For Hemingway, writing was about giving. It's about crafting words that will entertain and teach and encourage your readers. And that is what we must remember when the going gets tough. When Hemingway faced tremendous obstacles, he refused to give in. He knew that we cannot predict what the future will bring. We do not know who our words will inspire. Writing is a difficult art. Maybe you're suffering from writer's block and the words aren't flowing like you would like them to. Or maybe the words you put on the page don't live up to the idea you had in your head. Perhaps you can't find the time to write. Or maybe the phone rings or someone interrupts you as soon as you do find the time. Perhaps you've received rejections or a harsh review of your work. Or maybe your computer crashes just as you are about to hit save on your rough draft. Who better than Hemingway to understand all this? He once observed, there is no rule on how to write. Sometimes it comes easily and perfectly. Sometimes it's like drilling rock and then blasting it out with charges. So let's resolve not to become discouraged when life throws us curveballs. On those days when our writing is beset by difficulties, we won't give up. Instead, we'll keep writing and seeking to improve our craft with the expectation that there is someone out there who needs to hear our words. <laughs>